For the ones who get it done, the most important part is the one you need now. And the best partner is the one who can deliver. That's why millions of maintenance and repair pros trust Granger, Because we have professional-grade supplies for every industry, even hard-to-find products. And we have same-day pickup and next-day delivery on most orders. But most importantly, we have an unwavering commitment to help keep you up and running. Call, click Granger.com, or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. Hello, it is Ryan, and I was on a flight the other day playing one of my favorite social spin slot games on Chumbacasino.com. I looked over at the person sitting next to me, and you know what they were doing? They were also playing Chumba Casino. Coincidence? I think not. Everybody's loving having fun with it. Chumba Casino is home to hundreds of casino-style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere, even at 30,000 feet. So sign up now at chumbacasino.com to claim your free welcome bonus. That's chumbacasino.com and live the chumba life. No purchase necessary. BGW. Void or prohibited by law. See terms and conditions 18 plus. Hey, all. Welcome back to the Real Life Pharmacology podcast. I'm your host, pharmacist Eric Christensen. Thank you so much for listening today. Go check out reallifepharmacology.com. Get your free study guide on the top 200 drugs. Uh, great refresher if you're out of practice or if you're taking uh, board exams coming up, for example, or in pharmacology classes. Uh, it's a no-brainer to have that 31-page PDF on the top 200 drugs. So I put in uh, my clinical experience, some of the most important things that come up, as well as my experience in test-taking uh, with things that uh, frequently come up there as well. So uh, go get that for free. Simply an email will get you access to that. No cost to you at all. All right. The drug of the day today is citagliptin. Brand name of this medication is Genuvia. And this medication is what's called a DPP-4 inhibitor. Now that DPP-4 inhibitor name comes from its mechanism of action. Uh, citagliptin inhibits dipeptidyl peptidase 4. This prevents breakdown of incretin hormones. And if you remember from physiology, so incretin hormones are important in glucagon, uh, insulin, homeostasis, and ultimately uh, control of blood sugars. So incretin hormones, a couple examples that you may be familiar with if you've listened to previous podcasts. Uh, GLP-1 is an example of one of those hormones. So if you think about GLP-1 agonist medications, which we have covered previously, uh, that's where that's come from. And citagliptin works on that pathway to basically increase uh, that uh, GLP-1 hormone. In addition, uh, the other incretin hormone is GIP, and that would be glucose-dependent insulinotropic polypeptide. So again, both of these hormones work as part of insulin and glucagon uh, yin-yang. So basically, those hormones increase insulin release, and of course, those are from pancreatic beta cells, and they reduce glucagon release from alpha cells. Now, let's think about this in context of DPP-4 inhibitors versus GLP-1s. So GLP-1 is basically an exogenous administration of extra GLP-1 hormone. So that's where those, those drugs come from. That's how they work. Now, DPP-4 inhibitors like citagliptin preserve your body's own supply. So as you can imagine, if we give something extra from outside the body, above and beyond, we're probably going to get a greater response with the GLP-1 agonists compared to the DPP-4 inhibitors, which just preserve what your, your body has, basically. So long story short, in the A1C lowering effect, citagliptin and the other DPP-4 inhibitors are generally going to drop that A1C less than a GLP-1. So that's one of the reasons. There's a couple others too, um, why you don't see these drugs used quite as much um, as they used to be when they first come out, when we didn't have as many GLP-1s uh, that, that were effective. 
that coupled with um, cardiovascular risk reduction and some other things with, and, you know, more weight loss with GLP-1s, um, those are a few other reasons why GLP-1s you're typically going to see used out there more in practice than uh, citagliptin. Also, I have seen uh, providers try to do this using a DPP-4 inhibitor like citagliptin here with a GLP-1 agonist such as uh, Victoza, Bieta, uh Ozempic, all those uh, different type of, of brand name medications. Uh, so these should not be used together because they work on that similar pathway. In my mind, it's kind of analogous to an ACE and ARB using those together. Like you, sh- you shouldn't do it. They work on the same pathway. And biggest reason why we we don't use them together is we haven't seen any uh, in increased um, reduction in A1C with using them together either. And citagliptin is also very expensive uh, at this time as well. So uh, those multiple downsides are, are why I'm seeing, likely why I'm seeing less and less use of a drug like citagliptin in clinical practice. Uh, dosage forms, 25, 50, and 100 milligrams, uh, typically dose once a day. Adverse drug reactions. Uh, citagliptin is generally pretty well tolerated from what I've seen in, in practice from an anecdotal standpoint. Uh, lower blood sugar, obviously, we've got to pay attention to that particularly risky in patients that are on insulin already uh, or they're taking osophonyurea or we're stimulating uh, the release of insulin there. So hypoglycemia is going to be more of a risk when we're using uh, insulin or osophonyurea. Uh, GI adverse effects uh, can happen, have been reported. Uh, GI adverse effects are much more likely with the GLP-1 agonists like liraglutide, for example, um, than they are with DPP-4 inhibitors. But again, we're giving exogenous incretin-like hormones compared to citagliptin, which preserves what we have in our body. Uh, Adverse effect profile, like I'd mentioned, not incredibly troublesome. Um, It's usually pretty well tolerated in my experience. There are some rare reported reactions that I think it's useful to to know or pay attention to. Uh, There's been some rare skin type reactions reported. Uh, Heart failure with hospitalization risk. Uh, There has been some reported associations as uh, DPP-4 inhibitors causing heart failure exacerbations. Um, However, that's more typically more associated with uh, the latest evidence anyway with saxagliptin compared to citagliptin. So probably not a huge risk there, but something I think to to pay attention to. And you're probably not going to prevent somebody from using citagliptin because of heart failure. Um, But it is, I think, something to, to be aware of that there has been an association with that risk and obviously continue to watch for any further evidence that may uh, further um, document or demonstrate that risk. Other rare things that have been reported, acute pancreatitis, uh, and then some myalgia, achiness, uh, that type of of pain has been reported as well. Dose adjustments. I did want to mention this. So um, SIP enzymes don't play a major, major role in breakdown. So while CYP3A4 and CYP2C8 uh, have some minor impacts on breakdown of the drug, it is not really to a significant extent, uh, and we don't typically worry about any CYP uh, drug interactions that may alter the metabolism or any pharmacokinetic, or excuse me, pharmacogenomic alterations in those CYP enzymes likely aren't going to cause uh, too much for issues. However, renal function is important. Uh, There is dose adjustments with this medication. So that cutoff for this drug is 45 mils per minute. And if we are in the range of 30 to 45 mils per minute, we're going to reduce that maximum dose to 50 milligrams per day. Usual is 100 milligrams per day. Um, And then less than 30 mils per minute, uh, 25 milligrams per day. Monitoring parameters pretty straightforward. You're going to make sure you monitor that renal function. 
um, particularly when you first start the medication. And then, of course, we're going to look at, at A1C um, and, again, expecting uh, that A1C lowering effect to be less than 1, maybe in the range of 0.6 to 0.8 is what the literature says uh, when we use a drug like citagliptin, which compared to the GLP-1 agonist, which I've been doing throughout this podcast, GLP-1 agonist, you might get above 1 or more uh, percent reduction in A1C. Again, depending upon what agent you're using and, and dose. All right, let's take a quick break from our sponsor and we'll wrap up with drug interactions. Go check out our sponsor today, meded101.com slash store, S-T-O-R-E. We've got tremendous resources, uh, study packages on the ambulatory care exam, geriatric certification for pharmacists, BCPS, uh, BCMTMS, NAPLEX exam, uh, and much, much more as well there. So go support meded101.com slash store, S-T-O-R-E. For med students out there, PA students, nursing students, uh, we've got a growing list of resources as far as books goes. Uh, Meded 101 Guide to Nursing Pharmacology is a book on Amazon. Go check that one out. I'll put links uh, to other resources, case studies, drug interactions, uh, Amazon books on those topics as well. So I'll put those links uh, in the show notes. So definitely support the sponsor. Uh, meded101.com slash store uh, and those corresponding links in the show notes today. All right, let's wrap up with drug interactions. So understanding that we don't have a lot of SIP issues with citagliptin, uh, this tends to lead toward less risk for drug interactions, which is a good thing, certainly. So really, Genuvia citagliptin has low risk for drug interactions, The most common ones in clinical practice that I really pay attention to closely um, is blood sugar changing drugs. So perfect example, corticosteroids. So if somebody has an asthma attack and we give a steroid burst, that's going to raise blood sugar and obviously directly oppose the beneficial effects of citagliptin. And then of course, same thing on the flip side, drugs that lower blood sugar could increase the risk for hypoglycemia. And that risk is really exacerbated uh, by drugs that either are insulin or stimulate insulin secretion. So uh, all your insulin analogs, uh, as well as sulfonylureas like glipizide, gliburide, and medications like that. All right, well, that's going to wrap up the podcast for today. Do me a huge favor, leave a rating, review on iTunes or wherever you're listening. I greatly appreciate you taking the time to do that. Uh, If you have suggestions, comments, uh, mededucation101 at gmail.com, feel free to shoot me a message there. I do my best to respond to everybody that emails me. It might take me a couple days once in a while, um, but I really try to stay on top of that. And your your guys' emails are very important to me for sure. Uh, With that said, support sponsor meded101.com slash store, S-T-O-R-E. And I am going to sign off for today. Thank you. For the ones who get it done, the most important part is the one you need now. And the best partner is the one who can deliver. That's why millions of maintenance and repair pros trust Granger Because we have professional-grade supplies for every industry, even hard-to-find products. And we have same-day pickup and next-day delivery on most orders. But most importantly, we have an unwavering commitment to help keep you up and running. Call, click Grainger.com, or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. Hello, it is Ryan, and we could all use an extra bright spot in our day, couldn't we? Just to make up for things like sitting in traffic, doing the dishes, counting your steps, you know, all the mundane stuff. That is why I'm such a big fan of Chumba Casino. Chumba Casino has all your favorite social casino style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere with daily bonuses. That should brighten your day, low. Actually, a lot. So sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. That's ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. BGW. Void. we prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus.